Let's kick this off with what are you working on now, Nicholas? I'm doing cri shooting Criminal Minds. <laughs> yeah, that's lovely. I go back on Monday. I usually stay until Monday just because I, who likes to fly on a Sunday? I, that's just my motto. That's not even really my motto. <laughs> but I'm shooting on Monday, so I should, get, I should get out of here so I can finish the season finale of Criminal Minds. <laughs> There's a picture that Shamar took with all of us where he's showing his arm muscles. So that was tweeted out. <laughs> Shamar's tweet, if you guys get Shamar's tweet. If you want to see Shamar's arms, go to Shamar. <laughs> go to Shamar. <laughs> Shamar's twat shows his arms. <laughs> <laughs>
So you go through all of those emotions, good or bad. So, and I really, I miss that. So it's kind of whenever I'm on Corona Minds, I'm reminded that I'm not as serious regular because half the time they're talking about shit I don't know. <laughs> and then I gotta say, what are you guys talking about? I say, oh, that's right, Nikki, you weren't here. And then they'll fill me in. <laughs> and it's just a different show. I mean, you know, Joss Whedon is, a, is, 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 an, is, is an amazing writer, too. And not that Criminal Minds isn't, but Joss's mind just works in a completely different galaxy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find time in Is your it Scarlett? Yeah. yeah. Do you find time in your busy schedule? Hi, Scarlett. Hi. <laughs> how are you? Good, how are you? I'm very uh, What are you wearing? <laughs> <laughs> Do I find time what? To date. To date? I have a girlfriend. So she's probably hoping not that I don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> In terms of um, of in front of camera stuff, like a movie or anything of that of yeah, that ilk, um, nothing that that I've heard. I, I think there's a better chance of us making a Kitchen Confidential movie at this point. <laughs> <laughs> paying, paying Cooper twenty million dollars. <laughs> I guess John Cho would be next on that list, maybe. <laughs> he is in Star Trek. And then we'll get. Um, Benedict Cumberbatch, <laughs> put him in there too as the, as, as, as the evil chef that works in the restaurant. <laughs> I love that guy. So nothing, comic books, yes. Oh, Jesus, other stuff, not, no, not no. <laughs> Rash roll. Is your hand up? Right there, I see you. I'd like to ask you a question to, that calls on you to step back into the mind of the Josh uh, leading expert on Xander Harris. Oh. Um, Who is that? <laughs> <laughs> In the penultimate episode of Buffy, Buffy says to Xander... That's the last before the last before the last. <laughs> That's the third to last. <laughs> Second to last, really? That, that word's always best with my mind a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's such an important word that they actually made a name for it. So yes, so the second to last episode. Buffy says to Xander that he's her strength and the reason she made it that far. And given the various characters that Buffy draws in from, I've always had trouble taking that line seriously. So I would ask you... What do you think she's getting at? And if not, why is that? That I'm her strength? Because the stuff that you didn't see was that I was her workout partner. <laughs> I would spot her whenever she was struggling on the bench press. I would say, do it for your truck, Buffy. Do it for your truck. We would wear our Oakley sunglasses and go jet skiing. And if you can't get strength for that, my friend, then you're dead. <laughs> Actually, it's funny, I, was where I, I grew up in the valley, in the San Fernando Valley, which is the, oh my God, you know, like the gallery and stuff. So I, I started working out at a fairly uh, early age because I played baseball, and I was actually working out at my gym in this place called Chatsworth, California, in the valley, as a holiday health spa. And there were these two guys, you know, wearing short shorts and neon and their Oakley sunglasses. This is in the 80s, man. And the guy really was screaming, do it for your truck, man. <laughs> he was struggling with his bench press, and he totally meant it. The valley, that's the valley for you. Man, he's doing it for his truck. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I have seen them. I think it's, I, I think it's nice, you know? Um, I, I'm, I'm gonna be doing some stuff with it that I really can't talk about right now, but, uh, but I think it's lovely. How's that for an answer? Yeah. <laughs> but Mike and I talk about it, exactly talking about it, isn't it? Blue. <laughs> Being the resident expert on the Snoopy dance, right? Is there a now that I am the expert on. <laughs> <laughs> is there any chance you could teach me the Snoopy dance? It's fairly simple, and I will do it at the end of the show. I was I was close it down with the Snoopy dance. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, when I would do it, I'll just show you exactly how to do it. 
and I'll have you stand up and do it with me. <laughs> Man, I might even bring you on stage. Okay. It's fairly simple. Okay. Yep. Uh, let's talk about the Buffy musical. Did you guys? Um, <laughs> did you guys all have to take like voice lessons? Was it hard to to learn all that stuff? Did and it the sound dance, like the dance routine? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it did. Yeah, you've got this thing that's called uh, I think it's called like an equalizer or something. <laughs> um, no, I just got my stuff and I sang it. Yeah. You know, I just figured it didn't. You know, it didn't matter if I was good or bad <laughs> because I wasn't hired as a singer or a dancer. And it's whenever you just don't care how you come off, you come off pretty well, you know? Yeah. Um, I just really, I, just, I, I took to it like a, like a fish to water. <laughs> um, I, just had to, I just had a good time with it. Yeah. I still have the, um, the only thing that I had from Buffy uh, are the, the, the black shoes that I wore in my dance routine. Not the pajamas? <laughs> no, I didn't. Because those pajamas were gray. Yeah, I only wore bottoms anyway. <laughs> uh, and there are silk. I'm not really into silk. I'm, I'm, I'm not a silk man. Because I don't want to get my have to get my pajamas dry thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> like throw them in the washing machine, which is just off my kitchen. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, while on the subject of, I know we were talking about Josh Whedon. You were talking about him a little earlier. Um, he has a tendency to, you know, recast a lot of, you know, uh, folks that he's worked with, uh, Alexis Denisoff being one. Um, so, like, with all the properties that he's, you know, doing now, especially particularly with the Marvel properties, have you been approached to, to do anything? I, I met, I auditioned for the S.H.I.E.L.D. show. Oh, okay. And it went to, and it went to, it went, it went, it went to another person that, that, that was a part of, uh, part of, uh, part of Joss's realm. Okay. So, yeah. But it's true, I mean, like, that's a prime example of him using the same people just right. me. <laughs> um, I heard that the shawarma scene in um, the end credits of the Avengers was based on your audition for Buffy. After you finished auditioning, you went. You said, "Let's get shawarma." Is that um, true? It is. What's funny? It wasn't. It wasn't the. It was. We were. Um, it was after I'd gotten the part, and I went. I was on my way to shoot. It was season one. It was probably after the first two or three episodes because we. I used that line in Teacher's Pet. When I was being drugged, and I'm like, "What's this shawarma? It's, 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 it's like a big meat stick. I mean, it's so strange." But I had just gotten some falafel on the way into work, and I saw the shawarma, and I just walked in and dropped it off. And I'm like, "What's a shawarma?" <laughs> so then he put it in the teacher's pet, and then they used it in the, in, in the Avengers. So. Oh wow! Yeah, I'm a genius. <laughs> My first check for writing that: one million dollars. <laughs> 